We need to put things into context. First of all, it's not a coup d'etat. It's a palace revolution. General Brees Oligi Nigema is Ali Bongo's cousin. The campaign was 60 years of Bongo is too much. The Bongos found it necessary to put Ali Bongo aside and to effectively continue the Bongo PDG system. They put Oligi Nigema forward. We know who's behind Oligi Nigema. The Bongo system continues. in Gabon has since been called a palace revolution or a family affair by the Gabonese opposition leader Albert Osa. There has been a series of dramatic events in Gabon in this instance drama meaning the drama used to describe a drama queen. From the unusual call to action by the detained president Ali Bongo on social media quote for people to make noise end of quote. Suitcases and bags of money being found at the palace arrests and detentions of politicians and family members, French influence rumors, to the revelation that the army general Bryce Nguami, replacing the ousted president, is his cousin. You are watching African Boss. Here we discuss business, politics, finance and technology. Sit back, relax, make yourself a cup of tea as we take a little dive into this latest but fascinating coup d'etat. While Gabon and Africa celebrated the ousting of President Ali Bongo by the military junta, ending the Bongo family's 56 years grip on power, who apparently forgot that it was the country of Gabon, not the Bongo Kingdom. The Gabonese people did not tell us that their coup d'etat was actually very different from the others happening in Africa. While West Africa grapples with violent jihadists, the Gabonese people are grappling with the Bongo family feud. On the face of it, it seemed revolutionary, ending a political dynasty, the realization that democratically elected leaders are taking us for granted, and it was time for change. Yes, that, and a little bit more involving the family. If you look deep into it, beyond the surface, the Gabonese backdrop story is as juicy as that of the popular American show a few years back called The Game of Thrones, a TV series based on a fictitious ancient kingdom where families are holding on to power while other relatives and families are trying to wrestle the power from them. In the series, the power struggles were ruthless with unfathomable violence and the intriguing backstabbing of the highest order. The Gabon coup might just be the real version and modern episode of Game of Thrones, minus the violence. The story begins with the elder Bongo, Omar Bongo, the former president of Gabon who took power in 1967. He went on to rule the country for 42 years until his death in 2009. His son Ali Bongo ruled a further 14 years until he was ousted a few days back. The elder Omar Bongo started the looting of his country's resources as soon as he got into power. He died as one of the richest men on earth, bequeathing all his wealth to his 54 children. Yes, Omar Bongo had 54 children from his three wives and other women. That is a lot of children in a small country. For context, King Swati of Eswatini, who has 11 wives, used to pick up a bride every year for some time, has only 36 children. As they say, each to their own, no judgment here. However, I mention this number to highlight that with 54 children, throw in money and power, surely a serious family feud is inevitable 
and as the opposition leader claims a palace revolution or family feud might have been what got us here. Pascalini Bongo, a daughter, the first born child in the family, keep that name in mind as she is an important part of the story. Wealth and power is at the center of the Bongo political dynasty in a country where 40% of its population live in poverty, according to the World Bank. But just to emphasize this point, the recently deposed President Ali Bongo's first wife, Ingi Bongo, once appeared on the reality American show called Really Rich Real Estate, shopping for a $25 million USA dollars mansion in California and at some point rented a 25,000 a month apartment from Sean Combs or P. Diddy. This is a true story. The large Bongo family are very rich, obviously, from the crude oil that French companies e extract and other natural resources such as timber and manganese. A report estimates an annual revenue of six billion USA dollars from the oil industry alone. The proceeds are recirculated among the ruling elite and family members to maintain royalty and power the dynasty, with the help of French companies such as Total, who take the lion's share of the resources. Still, you'd think six billion alone would be more than decent money for a country of 2.3 million people to perform better, even disregarding other sources of income. In Gabon, you have to be part of what is called the Bongo system to succeed. Basically, you must have connections with a Bongo family if you want to progress at anything. I guess with 54 children, that is possible. In 2007, the Bongo family was investigated by their masters, the French authorities, and were obviously found to be very rich. No prices for guessing that right. The French police found nearly 40 properties in posh areas of Paris and others, apparently including a hotel, 70 bank accounts and numerous luxury cars. The Bongo family's value of their real estate empire in France is estimated in the tens of millions of dollars, all paid for in cash. This is not the extent of the Bongo family riches. This was just in France alone in 2007. Reportedly, the elder Omar Bongo had moved 100 million USA dollars through a New York City bank account from 2003 and 2007. Obviously, if you account for inflation in 2023, this figure increases significantly. The extent of the Bongo family's wealth is unknown, as most of it is hidden in foreign countries, typical of African leaders. The discovery of suitcases of money at the palace after the coup d'etat then is not surprising really. The question is why keep such huge sums of money in cash at the palace? Ali Bongo's son Nauradin explained that it was leftover campaign money. Maybe they should have gone on YouTube and typed in multiple streams of income. Safer that way. On a serious note, this proves that they did not see the coup coming. Ali Bongo had a significant stroke in 2019 that left him with right-sided paralysis and speech difficulties, requiring a lengthy period of rehabilitation in Morocco following the stroke. Many people say that Ali Bongo's wife, Srivia, and their son, Noreddin, have been ruling the country by proxy since then, as Ali Bongo struggles with his health after the stroke. Noreddin, Ali Bongo's son, had increasingly become powerful after his father's illness and he was given a top adversary job to the president to consolidate his ascent to the top job. This reportedly caused friction between Jeno Nguema and Ali Bongo's wife and his son. Jeno Bryce Nguema considered himself loyal to the president and not his wife and son. For context, Jeno Bryce Nguema was called back from exile to head the elite presidential guard as a Jeno after the president had suffered the stroke in 2019. As he was his cousin, he was considered to have been the safest option at the time to prevent any coup attempts. The opposition leader, Osa, claims that Ali Bongo's sister, Pascalini, was behind the coup and Jeno Nguema, 
and that this was an inside job. The coup d'etat is designed to continue the bongo system. Pascalini, the first born child of Oma Bongo herself, was a powerful minister and then a top representative of the government. She did not see eye to eye with President Ali Bongo after their falling out a few years ago, which led to her dismissal from the government. Albert Osa, who has been nothing but a sideshow since the coup took place, has called it a palace revolution or a family affair. Osa has reminded everyone that he should actually be at the center of political events and he should be the president as he won the election according to his assessment. It has been reported that the Bongo system benefits the continuing of the French influence in Gabon and plunder of its resources. There is a lot you would imagine that goes on with the Bongo family. I have scratched the surface for you, but we are here to see how this plays out. Is the opposition leader just bitter that he has been left out? It might well be the case. But in the end, let us remember that the core of the story are the long-suffering people of Gabon, who has seen their country plundered by the Bongo family and the French companies without having a bite at the cherry. The coup d'etat in Gabon might have inevitably stoked the fire of anti-democracy sentiment spreading in Africa, as the continent tries to chart its own course to economic and political freedom. If you have made it this far, please subscribe to African Boss and hit the like button. Cheers guys, have a good day.